Hi and welcome everyone. This is the Hobo Prepper and I am Friar Tuck. So today I am going to be interviewing Mr. Puckett here and he has got an interesting story. Oh. Say hi Dave. Hello, how y'all? All right, so how long have you been out here in uh, in Gainesville? Uh, eight months, I think. You've been here eight months? Yeah. What, what is it that made you homeless? What brought you to being homeless? Well, I had a heat stroke. Ended up in the hospital for six days. Ended up losing my job, my place where I was staying. And the world fell apart. The world fell apart? Yeah. So what lessons, because you, I remember you telling me that when you, you used to see homeless, you used to make fun of them. Yeah. Okay. And now that you're on the other side of the fence, what would you say to those people? They're making fun? Mm-hmm. Be careful what you make fun of. <laughs> Thanks you have a, re a way of circling back to you and so before all of this i mean you were a fence post you did fence posting right uh, yeah i built fences did you own you owned your own business no i sub well i own my name but i subcontracted to a fence company yeah and um like what was your lifestyle like before this money all the time and now that you're homeless with the money and everything like that how does how does it work now I'm still working on it. It's, uh, it's pretty difficult. So what things do you do to support yourself? I go to stores from people. I trade stuff. I just do what I can do. Try to make it happen. I'm and, always trying something. And yeah, as long as I've, I, I don't think I've seen you go to work since, uh, since, since I've known you. Mm -hmm. And yet you're still taken really good care of. So, oh, yeah. kind of talk us through how trading works because this may be new to some people. Well, you you kind of hustle. You try to get something that somebody else wants and sell it for a higher price than what you paid for it. Okay, so it's just basic economics. Basic, yeah. What what things are valuable out here to the homeless? Food for sure. Okay. Safe lodging. That's about it. I know. So that's all I do in. Okay. Yeah. So we we know that being homeless that there that there are drugs and that's kind of one of the aspects of being homeless. Okay. Kind of give us an idea. Help us see what what you see. You know, as far as how drugs work and and how the homeless interact with each other. Well, I've seen drugs take over take over over people's life. I've seen people die from it. I. I seen a murder. Well, I didn't see a murder, but I seen the body. But uh, it's easy to fall into the drugs. Easy. How? I mean, somebody can slip between you and a cigarette. You know, it's that's weird. Okay. Yeah, so they... if you allow it, the drugs will take over, take you over. So, and we we know that you experiment and you play around. And so, okay. how have you kept yourself? Uh, how have you kept yourself from going insane and becoming one of those zombies? Find good people and stay with them. Say what? You can find good people. Okay. There's a few out here, but there's more bad than there is good. But I've had like maybe like two friends here. And like, as far as discerning people, kind of help us understand how to discern good from bad. You watch them. You pay attention to what they do and how they act. It's kind of hard to explain. It's kind of like a inner feeling that you get from somebody. Okay. And what things should you avoid? Like certain personality traits that you see? I see. And last experience was I thought I was helping somebody, but I found out to her the drugs were more important. And so she's gone. And how do how do friendships and relationships work out here? You got to build them. Is it harder than being housed up? That's a whole different story there too. But yeah. What's the difference? There, they still right in front of you. You're stuck. It's just, I don't know. I just like being in my tent better. <laughs> okay. 
So if you were to give survival advice, you know, because you know that some of these people, they're, they're preppers and they're prepping for the end of the world, the, the zombie apocalypse. What could you teach us that would help us improve our prepping skills? Get back to the basics, buddy. What does that mean, though? Learn to live off the grid. Okay. Elaborate. Uh, let's see. Learn how to make fires, cook. Just be yourself. Be, be by yourself. And so, because you don't have to worry about money because you do the trading and stuff. Yeah. I mean, are... are other than maybe a police interaction here and there, you're pretty much off the grid while you're living right in the middle of a concrete jungle, huh? Yes, sir. Okay, and how do, how does one do that? Because it's it's a talent. Survival instincts, I guess, would be, it's just, that's hard to explain. It's like everybody's giving up on you, but you can't give up on yourself. You gotta man up. Man up, that's a that's a big word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Them's fighting words. <laughs> well, you got to fight, man. You got to fight for yourself. I mean, you got to, you know, if you want to starve, you'll starve. If you don't, you find a way to make, make it work. So what is it that you like about this lifestyle? Uh, uh, see, I don't have to answer to nobody. I'm... That's so tough. That's a good question. <laughs> I got to work on that one. That's a good question. But what else do you like about it just off the top of your head? The freedom. If I need it, if I need housing during a storm, I can get housing. So it's... Uh -huh. But you stayed out during the last storm. Yeah, in my tent. Yeah, how did you survive that? With the Lord. <laughs> or with some higher power or something. It was, it, was, it was freaky, I tell you. What was so freaky about it? The way the tent was blowing. <laughs> it, was, it was a tough one. What tips would you tell somebody if they got caught out in the middle of the woods dealing with this? I mean, Hurricane Nicole was kind of a... Yeah. It, it, was, it was light, but how would you tell somebody how to deal with it? Find a big tree. Find a big tree? <laughs> Tie yourself around it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what about, like, so you're in the forest and yeah. you, you see trees, some of them are dying, some of them aren't. Mm -hmm. What are some tips that you could give people that uh, would help them discern, you know, what trees are good and not? Because nobody wants a, a widow maker. No. Well, that one's, you got pretty much use your own judgment and common sense on that one. But uh, I try to find at least four good trees to be around. Help block the wind when it comes. Okay. And um, so what is it you dislike about this lifestyle? The loneliness. Why is it, what, what still, is it that makes it lonely? loneliness and you're still surrounded by hundreds of people, but it's still lonely. Why is it lonely? Like explain that part. Uh, that's a tough, how am I gonna explain that one? I mean, I get it, but these guys might not. Uh, I'm trying to break it down here. They talk to you and stuff here, but they're really not friends and stuff. But that, there's a couple here that, that are my friends, but the loneliness sometimes gets to me. And be surrounded by hundreds of people. You know, so. Is it just because you don't have regular companions around, yeah. or is it because you don't feel that nobody cares about you? Both. Both of that. Which is worse? The one that don't care about you. And like, being with the shelter next to Grace Marketplace and everything, how how what is their services really like? Because on one hand they seem like they're trying to help you, but on the other hand they could give two shits about you. The only thing I come on from this place is a free washing machine and food every now and then. That's it. Okay, but you also have connections with some of these some of the advocates. Yeah. And how does that help you? Yeah. Because I get stuff from them too, and you know, like pillows and stuff like that. It helps. Mm -hmm. They pretty much watch my back. Yeah. Okay, so you got a couple of those, and like, how did you develop those connections? Was it just over time, or did you do it intentionally? Intentionally over time. And so, like, how do you dealing with those people because they're so jaded? How do you 
How do you even work in a relationship like that? Be honest. Be yourself. Treat people the way you want to be treated. You know, it's... It took take, take a while. It took a while to build it up, but... You can ask my buddy, I can pretty much get anything I want. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, I find that absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah. I, I was I was bragging about that, how well connected you are. You're like a mafioso. I got free tent. Yeah. And people give you a lot of stuff too. Right. Because, well, you think it's because of you or do you think it's, it's other reasons? I like to think it's because of me, but I think there's other, there's some behind it too. Other what? reasons, but. What do you mean? Where they think I owe them something or something like that. Why? Because they give you something? Yeah. But, yeah. So, give me some tips on, uh, this is, this is a final question. Okay. I, you know, somebody, they end up losing their home. They're coming out homeless for the first time. They're going through the great dispossession. Yeah. How, what advice would you give them to stay safe and clean and keep their humanity? <laughs> that's a good one. I'm, a <laughs> I'm known for that. That was a good one there, buddy. I was totally unfair for that one. No, uh, it's that that you lost and try to start over again. I know it's tough because I'm still trying to do that, but I lost two homes, you know, so. Yeah, you lost two homes, lost money, lost everything. How easy is it to lose everything, though? It's easier than what you think. Even if you got it all paid off? Well, well mine was paid off. I lost it. <laughs> so, watch out for the women. <laughs> watch out for the women. Especially out here? Especially here. Why? Because they all, they all got something in their head. <laughs> They're all trying to scheme. They just... It's tough. Okay, anything else you want to say before I, I close the interview off? I pray everybody gets something from this and keep your head up. That's all I can say. I'm that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Um, that is David Puckett. He is one of the few people that uh, still has his humanity, regardless of everything that he's gone through. And so, you guys know how to how to help me out uh, through the channel. If you like interviews like this, uh, like, subscribe, share. I need a thousand subscribers, four thousand watch hours in order to get monetized. Also, I have my affiliate gear down in the bottom. Um, a lot of the stuff, um, you know, is what we use out here. Uh, some of it's a little bit better. It's more like a hobo's wet dream, but it still works. And then also you guys know that you have my tip jar. For those of you that don't like uh, PayPal, you can always use my, uh, use my uh, cash app account. And if you wanna, if you wanna make a donation or a tip jar. Now, I told you guys that the next video was going to be uh, on patreon so that's this video but i'm also making it free to everybody else um and i'm probably going to do that for the first week or so uh while bridget and i work on testing out the kinks and making sure that it all it all works so uh thank you for watching thank you for being our friend and um we will see you in the next video